Hello and welcome to this presentation of our paper They would do better if they worked together. My name is Nicolas Wurman and I will be guiding you through our research and what we did. So for some motivational background, passwords are hard to use. Even if you use them securely, companies will likely leak them regularly and you will have provided passwords to many companies. In theory, all of these passwords would have to be randomly generated and secure. Um, in practice, memorizing that many randomly generated secure passwords is unlikely, if not impossible. So managing secure passwords is really hard. In the real world, this has actually led to a high amount of password reuse across uh, multiple accounts from multiple users. And it has led to common easy passwords being used by many users across all of the internet. There are top common passwords lists, so the most common passwords across the internet from multiple companies for multiple years. And they always start with insecure passwords like 123456. I think in the past uh, this was actually 12345, but I've guess uh, but I guess we have gotten more secure since then. In an online survey in February 2019 most participants, 69%, have actually stated that they are very good at protecting their online accounts with 59% actually believing that they are safer than the average person online. Yet 52% have stated that they reuse passwords across multiple accounts and 13% even stated that they reuse passwords for all their accounts. Furthermore, only 24% of participants in this survey have stated that they use a password manager. So what is a password manager? In theory, it's a solution to your problem. So managing secure passwords is hard for you. You don't want to manage passwords for each service that you uh, sign up to. And so you use a password manager where you only have to remember one password, the password to your password manager, which could in theory be secure because you will use it often in order to access your other passwords. And then the password manager will actually store secure passwords for you uh, for each service that you sign up with. So you can have secure and randomly generated passwords for each of your account without having to memorize all of them. In a even more ideal world, you also get the usability benefit of the password manager being actually able to interact with the services and websites that you use and being able to provide passwords to those websites and obtain passwords from those websites in order to uh, make it even easier for you to sign up on these websites. However, in practice, in order to interact with websites or services on desktop, password managers have to interact with your browser and they usually do so via browser extensions. So here you can see a list of common browser extensions when you search for password managers and you install the preferred password manager, the one that you currently use. And then in theory, you have a plugin that scans your website and inserts itself and its functionality into the website when it detects that you need to authenticate and need access to your username and password. So here, for example, we have KeePass having inserted a little icon into my username and password field um, in order to authenticate me for this service. However, to do so, the password manager has to by himself scan the entire website, detect that it is a sign up website or a login website, and it has to uh, detect the username form and password form, and it has to manually via JavaScript inject itself into the, those forms uh, etc cetera, etc cetera. so there's a lot of code behind of it uh, behind it and because of that it is very complex for less common websites that might not be as tested um, this often means that you uh, that your password manager will not work out of the box for example we have here our internal Jitsi where my password manager will not detect the user and password fields uh, that I need to log in in order to use that Jitsi so for this paper, we wanted to analyze these kinds of problems, what they are, why they occur, and perhaps how we can fix them. So we started by collecting issues from GitHub and the Chrome Web Store. GitHub, of course, being the repository for open source password managers where users can report issues directly to the repository, and the Chrome Web Store being the 
web extension platform where you download password managers and can leave reviews in order to uh, report issues to the developers. So in total, we found 1,300 reviews on the Chrome Web Store that we called for 15 password managers. And we found 400 issues on GitHub. And additionally, we found 729 uh, support requests on Chrome Web Store. Support requests being an additional section that a developer can enable to specifically get uh, issue reports instead of just reviews like uh, I like this password manager a lot or I hated this password manager. Three authors had to rate the usability, meaning how well this issue even fit into the uh, kind of issues we wanted to collect, the interaction issues with websites, uh, as opposed to, for example, the aforementioned reviews of I like this password manager or similar. And these three authors also created an initial codebook of types of issues that we found. And so we arrived at 152 relevant issues, issues that we could actually use as interaction problems between websites. We investigated these 152 issues for the exact cause, so the exact uh, interaction of code that caused the issue. We categorized them and based on our previously created codebook, we created groups uh, that you could call types of interactions that we will uh, talk about a bit uh, later in the results. So in conclusion, we got seven categories and 39 interactions out of it. Um, so 39 problematic examples of how password managers fail to interact with websites. We then use the interactions we collected to build so-called minimal working examples, meaning a minimal amount of code, an example snippet that is used to reproduce this interaction. For example, we have here the source code of the Google.de uh, page for two-page login. So Google.de has a two-page login where you enter username and password on two separate pa pages, one after another. And in the case of their code, they of course have a lot of dependencies, third party uh, links to YouTube that they implemented um, and all kinds of other uh, components that they need to use their Google branding and Google website. Our minimal working example, on the other hand, uh, consists of simple HTML with no special tags. Uh, we mainly focus on the form which simply provides a username input and the next button to get to the second step of the two-page login. And uh, we also include a short title and description for each use case, mainly for usability during testing. For testing then, we use a automated Selenium script, which allows us to select a password manager and then automatically opens a new Chrome environment with the password manager installed and our list of interactions. And we can then simply click on each of these links and work through the list of interaction to see for each interaction how the password manager interacts with it and note down our results. Before we get to the results, uh, I want to quickly note that we have a full replication package, uh, including the website that we built for testing. So the source code of all of our minimal working examples and scripts that we used like the Selenium script, as well as a example video recording for every interaction that we tested. And it's available at this URL. And you can also use this QR code in order to access the replication package. Let's talk about our results. We tested the 15 most downloaded password managers in the Chrome Web Store. And additionally, the three browser vendor password managers. So the Chrome password manager, the Firefox password manager, and the Edge password manager. And these are our results. So the red ones mean not working interactions. The green ones mean uh, well working interactions. The yellow ones mean workaround or kind of hacky interactions. And the black one means actions that are not applicable because of features that they have that work differently. These are of course only a few of the interactions that we tested, more are in our paper. So to summarize, we found that 17 out of 39 of the interactions we tested were not seamless for more than five password managers. So for 17 out of 39, almost half of all interactions could not even be passed by uh, five password managers in our data set. We also found 
use cases that no password manager could pass. So we didn't actually find a password manager that worked with all of the websites that we threw at it. So what does this mean? Well, it means that it's hard to build a password manager for the web. And why is it hard? Well, we found, as we mentioned before, different categories, different types of issues uh, or types of interactions uh, that we want to present here, starting with the domain matching. So the most simple example is you have two domains that use the same credentials and the password manager now has to s decide even if it's just a subdomain whether it's safe to share an account for a main domain for the same subdomain or whether it's not safe. Then we also found different uh, attributes of input fields that could either be supported or not be supported. For example, the autocomplete attribute is actually perfect for password managers because it specifies what kind of input field this is, what kind of input should go in there. There are autocomplete fields for passwords, usernames, etc. And then there are requirements that you can specify like the maximum length of a field, the maximum length of a password field, etc. So we tested support for those in different interactions. We tested weird JavaScript interactions that we found like uh, types of encryption where uh, JavaScript would actually grab all signs that you input into an input field and replace them with stars. So the password manager when scanning the field would only get stars, but the password was already sent to the server. Uh, and dynamic input fields that only appear when you click a certain button, for example. And we also found additional elements so interactions where additional elements were given like pin input fields that could even consist of multiple input HTML tags. So they would be theoretically multiple fields to the password manager. And then there were additional forms like registration forms shown on the same page or additional fields like first name and last name instead of simply entering a username. Uh, and we also found many more that you can find in the paper. So since I don't want to talk too much about the types of issues we found. I want to present a few more solutions. More of these will also be in the paper. So the first and most obvious one I hinted at is the autocomplete attribute with which you can specify what type of field this is and the format specifiers with which you can already specify things like maximum password length. And if all password managers would support these already standardized fields, then a lot of the interactions in our sample set could already be passed. There's even one for one-time codes, so TOTP support or similar two-factor support is also already there. This can even be hypercharged. Apple recently proposed a new password rules attribute uh, which you could use in order to specify what requirements you have for a password and what, for example, signs you allow or signs you don't allow. Um, you can see more about that at this URL. Another solution I would like to propose concerns domain matching, which is the issue of multiple subdomains like example.com and auth.example.com requiring to share credentials. We currently didn't find a solution that password managers could implement in order to solve this behavior. Um, and therefore, we proposed to introduce a new header or tag similar to the content security policy or cross-origin resource sharing, where a website can specify which other websites or which other domains are allowed to use the credentials that this website provides. And then a simple head request by the password manager could uh, inquire whether domain sharing between a website and a different website are allowed. So these will be all solutions that we present here. More solutions will be in the paper. So to summarize, we found 39 interactions, a lot of which were not supported by the 15 plus three password managers that we tested them with. And we found a few solutions that could be implemented right now and a few solutions that still need to be implemented in web standards. So there's quite a bit of work to do. Now, thank you very much for your time and attention and I or we will be happy to answer any questions you might have and discuss any remaining results that we couldn't cover in this short talk.